So today I'm going to teach you about tables. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a script into server script service. And then a table is a value that holds other values. So I'll give an example. I'm first going to make a variable and set to some value. So again, variables hold values. And then in order to make a table, we just put in these curly brackets right here, like so. And then this is a table. Then we can go ahead and print this. You see what it outputs. You see it just prints the table itself. So because a table is a value that can hold values, uh, we can put other values in here. So I can put 100, or I like cats, or even uh, the base plate in the game. So now we're going to print this. You can see it still prints the table, but now you can actually see there's something inside the table. And in Roblox, you can open this up and see what's inside. So you can see uh, the first value is 100, and the second value is I like cats, and then the third value is the base plate. And you can see it's in order. So uh, this left, uh, this, these left numbers are called an index. Uh, sometimes it's also called a key as well. And then the right side is just the values themselves. And just remember that it is in order when you make a table like this. And then in order to access a specific value in the table, like instead of printing the entire table, we can just print the value inside the table. We put these straight braces right here uh, in order to index the table. And then we just choose what index number we want. So we can, if we put one, uh, like so, then it should print 100, which it does here. And then if we do two, and do I like cats. And remember, that's just uh, it's in order, so. So one's 100, two is I like cats, and three is the base plate for my table. Okay, so something else we can also do is we can change values in the table. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename this variable to TBL, short for table, just for some clarity. So table, and then I'm going to access a value that I want to change. So I want to change, let's say, the second value. So I'll put a 2 there because it's the second one. Then, I got, then I'll just set it to a new value. So let's say I want to do this for 500. And then we can print to be sure. Then we can go ahead and run this. You can see it changed into 500 for the second index. You can also add values after a table is already created. So for here, we create a table and then it has three values, but sometimes you'll want to add a new value into the table sometime later. So to do that, uh, we can go to the wiki right here, and I'll p leave the link in the description. And go ahead and type in table, and click on engine API, and then it's the one that's lowercase right here. So table, a library of table functions. Go ahead and click on that. You can see there's a bunch of functions for tables. Uh, the one I'll be using is inserts right here. So there's two of them. Uh, I'll just use one of them. So do table insert. Uh, pass in the table I want to add, and then the value I want. So let's say I want to add in uh, negative 200. Then we'll go ahead and print the table. And then you can see it adds the 200 at the end. If you want to add a value in the middle of the table or at the beginning of the table, then you can put the index placement in the middle right here. So let's say I want to add it to the first one, the first index instead of the last index. For to run this now, you can see it adds it to the first one and then it moves the other ones down. And then let's say we do number two index instead of one. You can see it inserts that second index and it moves everything else downward besides the previous one. Like, like, uh, likewise, we can also remove uh, values. So let's say I want to remove the first one. So I'm use a function called table.remove. And again, it's on this wiki right here. So if you forget, you can always just go here and see. And it also gives you a description of what the function does. So table.remove uh, will remove a value and you need to give it the index number. So let's say I want to move the first one. So I'll just do one, because that's the first one. Oh, I forgot to print. Print table. And now if we're to look, you see there's no more 100. 
and you can see it also moves everything up by one. So the I like cats is no longer the second index, it's now the first index. Something else we can also do is we can also loop through a table. So we know that we can do this to print the first value, and then we can also do that again for the second value, and then again for the third value, like so. But it's not great to have to type this each time. Let's say we have like a hundred values in a table, you would have to write this a hundred times. So that's not ideal. So what's better is to use a loop. So what we can do is we can use a for loop to help us with that. So we know that there is three values. So we can make a for loop that runs three times, like so. And then we can also just print table and then we use the i variable. So remember the i variable is just the, the beginning of the number all the way to the end of the number. And I can go in and show you what that is. So I'm going to print i and then the value of the table by using i. I'm going to get rid of this. So now we're to run this. You can see it prints. So remember i is this left one here, so 1, 2, 3, and then the value, which we, we index with. That's 100, I like cat space plate. So that's a much easier way to do it. And a little bit of a better way is instead of putting 3, we should just instead get the length of the table. And in a lot of cases, you don't actually know how uh, long your table is. So in order to get the length, we just type in uh, the number sign and then table right afterwards. We can actually do that here too. So size of table is number sign and then the table name. Now for it to run this, you can see it says size table is 3 and then it will loop 3 times because of that. Another way to loop through a table, so this is a bit of a newer method, I think it came out a couple months ago. So any scripting videos that's released longer than 4 months ago, they probably won't have this method. So another way to loop through it is for i, v in table do, and we'll go ahead and print that as well. So I'm going to get rid of this. You can see it also does the same thing. So this is the new, uh, this is one of the newer ways of looping through a table. So you can also use this or the other method, whichever one you find comfortable with. So that's just kind of the general basics of tables. Next I'll show you how to actually use this in a bit of a more practical example. So go back to this place right here. And then you can see if I were to run the game, I have this color changing script that changes the color of every part uh, in this model right here. So we're going to do something uh, similar to that. So I have this other model right here, it just has three parts, part A, part B, and part C. So I'll we'll go ahead and make a script for that. So I'm going to make a variable for the model first, just for uh, organization. So that parts model, game that workspace, that parts. Then I'll go ahead and uh, grab each part and change the color for each one. So part A, the brick color, and I'll set to a random color for now. And I'll do this for each part in the model. B, and then C. And if I were to run this, you can see it works fine. So there's uh, a couple issues with this method. Uh, so for one, each part that I have would need to have an identical name. Oh, well, not identical, unique name, I mean. So if I had a, if I added an, an, another part, I'll have to call it part D or part four or something. Another issue is that I would have to write in a line for each of these parts right here, which isn't ideal. So we're going to solve this by using tables. So first, instead of doing this uh, for each uh, part, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and make a table. So I'll make a table here. I was called table of parts. And then I'll go ahead and put each part into this table. So like this, a B, and then that C. So all this is doing is just making, it's just putting the three parts into this table because remember a table is just something that holds values, kind of like a variable. And you can also multi-line like this uh, in order to make it look a little cleaner. I'll leave it as a single line though. So now that we have a table of parts, we can loop through this. So again, there's two methods to loop through this. You can do it like this, where I loop through based on the size of the table. I'll go make a variable for a part. Use the i variable to retrieve the value of the table. 
And if you don't understand this, go back to the beginning of the video to understand the indexing process. And I'll just change the brick color to random. And then the second method to do it is the other one that I showed you. Looks something like this. And this, the V is just the value of the table, and we can rename this to par. So two different methods to loop, either one works, use whatever you're more comfortable with. So I'm going to use the first one, because I like that one more. And if I were to run this, you can see it still works. So another issue is that we have to, uh, well, put a part, a new, every single part inside this table, which isn't great. So we can actually use a function to help us solve this problem. So I'm going to delete this and I'll use a function called get children. And you guys should see a description right here pops up. So it, re it returns an array, which is just another word for a table, containing all of the children for whatever instance. So all that means is it just gives me a table and that table contains all of these parts right here for the model I'm using. And we can actually uh, test this too by printing this table just to kind of visualize what's actually going on here. So now we're to print it. Let's look at the table and you can see the table is uh, again just a table of each part inside. And what's really nice about this function is that since we don't have to make a table anymore we can actually uh, just keep making parts. So I'm gonna rename this to part since we don't need a unique name anymore. I'm gonna clone this a bunch of times. Like so. So now we have a lot more parts and in order to run the script, you can see it still works without having to need to do any extra work on our part. Um, so you know, a lot, a lot of So go back to the script, just to kind of refresh what's going on. I have a variable for the model, which just references this model right here. Uh, then this function returns a table of all the uh, of all the parts essentially. So it gets this, and you can see that I print the table here to kind of show you what I mean. So there's 24. Then I create a loop, and this loop will run based on the size of the table. And then I grab each part of each part in the table by uh, indexing it with the i variable. And then I'm just changing the color randomly. And that is it for the video. Tables are a bit trickier than other scripting topics, so if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below or join my Discord to ask me directly. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe for more videos. And I'll see you next time.